You're listening to Corpline here on QWRP-FM. Corpline this week is brought to you by the incessant pleasant pheasant. This bird spouts aphorisms filled with constant teeth grinding optimism, and it has no shut off switch. The incessant pleasant pheasant. Give it to your kids as a present. Good morning, Innsburg. Big G Money here with A Train. How's it going, Alex? Uh, how, how's it going, Alex? Um, Derek, what's what's going on out there? Hi, Graham. It's your summer intern, Derek. Gus wouldn't give me the keys to the mobile broadcast van until I promised to pick him up a hoagie, but we're all good to go now. Oh, okay, great. Uh, how how long do you think it'll be? Oh, the hoagie's going to take about 20 minutes, according to the guy at the sandwich shop. Gus has a really complicated order. How complicated can you make a hoagie? Oh, it's all in halves and fifths and something called aioli? Doesn't seem like Gus's style. He contains multitudes, and so does the sandwich. That's cool. How long until Alex is back online and able to transmit? Oh, he's good to go right now. Say hi, Alex. Hey, Graham. I uh, just got to tie off my dinghy. Well, glad you're back with us and glad all of you at home are with us here in beautiful Innsburg, the place you left to come home to. That really sounds like a Midnight Sun lyric. In fact, it is. And the Innsburg Tourism Board owes the Midnight Sun 0.003 cents every time someone uses it. So again, that's beautiful Innsburg, the place you left to come home to. You're welcome, Gus. (laughs) That's not fair. I got Gus a hoagie. And now, the news. Julesburg Seasonal Airport has hired the Innsburg Girl Scouts to work bird scare, shooing our feathered friends from near the terminal, and they've now occupied runway two and have expanded their jurisdiction to drone control. Were there a lot of drones flying over Julesburg Airport? Not especially, but as the Girl Scouts already owned the largest drone in the county, they have assumed drone control. How big is their drone compared to, say, the traffic copter? It's actually pretty close in size, but the catch is that, like all drones, it is operated remotely by a trained pilot on the ground, unlike the Coopter, which is operated by Richter. Uh. And in other news, it's time for the Innsburg Gong Show. You are going to have to be more specific. Rosemary Saltsmith has gone on another expedition and has expanded the Innsburg History Museum's collection to include several rare erotic gongs. Why is everything she finds lewd? She's got a good eye. Sure, but how do erotic gongs have anything to do with Innsburg history? You're asking for the relationship between the town you left to come home to and a literal gong show? Haha, <laughs> the town you left to come home to. I live out here in Lake Anesh. Which, in fact, brings us neatly to our big story today, the results of the Aldersman by-election. They have been tallied, and we can now announce the winner. Finally! I abdicated a month ago. I can't believe it's taken this long. So who's going to get saddled with all this red tape now? (laughs) Ah, well, you're going to love this. With a staggering 86% of the vote, it's you. I demand a recount? I'm afraid that would take quite some time, Alex. Voter turnout was 138%. How? Uh, Well, we counted the raccoons. We couldn't get them out of the pool. Also, there was a big volleyball tournament in town and... We just let everyone in the gym cast their vote between rounds. Alex? Alex? Derek? Hi, Graham. Hi. What can I do for you? What's what's happening? Well, Graham, it seems that our incumbent aldersman is so excited by the news that he's decided to cool himself off in the fresh waters of Lake Anesh. Also, I've never heard a man scream that much underwater before. Cool. Well, let me know when he resurfaces, and uh, I guess you don't have to drive very far to do the Aldersman Elect interview we had scheduled for later in the show. Uh, I don't have to drive far, but I may have to paddle. Looks like he's making a break for the shore on the opposite side. Sounds like you got it under control there, Derek. Meanwhile, back here in the studio, it's time for weather, so let's welcome Sadie Casperson. Oh, hi, Graham. Hi, Alex, on the phone. How's it going? Oh, oh, he's not. He, um, 
It's going great. How are you? Oh, Graham, I am so relaxed. As you know, me and Lenny took the RV out to the Maldives. We just got back. I've got a tan. Lenny's got a sunburn. As Jesus intended, praise be to him. You you took an RV to an archipelago? Oh, Graham, you silly Billy. Of course not. We took a plane and then we drove around on the archipelago. Oh, I suppose that makes more sense. How was it? Oh, well, Graham, it was certainly exciting. You see, at the beginning of our vacation, we thought we made a little oopsie boingo because for a place called the Maldives, there was basically no malls. And so I was all revved up to go to the Bed Bath & Beyond, but we did find something called Bathala Island, which was lovely. Lenny was a little disappointed, though, because he had a real craving for a hoagie and we just couldn't find a single place to sell them. Great shawarma, though. Cool. Oh, no, dear. It was real hot. Lenny's back was as damp as the schloop tubes on a wet day. Did you do anything that didn't make Lenny damp? Yes, almost. We went to the world's largest underwater glass restaurant, but then Lenny saw the menu and said he wasn't going to pay 3,000 Maldivian rufia to eat glass, and we could do that at home in Innsburg for free. Oh, any anything else you want to share? Oh, Graham, I thought you'd never ask. I'd love to share the teachings of Jesus with you. About the Maldives. Oh, I'm disappointed, but I'll keep trying later, hun. Uh, their electricity's all funny there. Funny how? Oh, I don't know. I just think their electricity has too much get-up-and-go juice. Lenny plugged in his razor and the whole thing vibrated so fast it took off most of his beard. Praise be to Jesus. I hated that darned chin muskrat he had. Listeners, I've just given up here and I'm looking at Wikipedia. Turns out Maine's electricity in the Maldives is 240 volts at 50 hertz. Oh, well, no wonder my Hitachi magic wand had such a kick to it. Gus, do we bleep that? Let me tell you, after a day behind the wheel of an RV, you get a real crick in the neck. So I get Lenny to really get up in there. What a novel way to use one of those. I feel like most people would describe it as getting up in there. Thanks for weighing in, Michael. Sadie, how is the weather? Almost as consistent as it is here. It's equatorial. Innsberg is not equatorial. No, the Maldives, silly. Sadie, I'm now asking you very patiently to give me the weather in Innsberg. Oh, but I am giving you the weather at Innsberg. It's the place I left to come home to. So your weather report for Innsberg is consistent. Yes, I give it every Tuesday. Thanks, Sadie. Oh, except I won't be here next Tuesday because Lenny and I are taking the RV for a little nip out to Albania. Lenny's always wanted to see their fortified bunkers. Well, that will be a treat, I'm sure. Oh, I don't know. I think all those bunkers are going to look the same, Graham. Goodbye, Sadie. Oh, bye-bye. Jesus be with you. Not today he ain't, because it's time for traffic with Richter Hammock Slam. How's it going, Richter? And so, despite being a literal classic and featuring Vincent Price, 1964's The Last Man on Earth is a bit of a letdown, which may have led to writer Richard Matheson choosing to be credited as Logan Swanson. I give that movie 2.2 on the Richter scale. Thanks, Richter. Bye. We go now to summer intern Dare. Oh, God. Hello, QWRP, you're on the air. Graham, I am guaranteed two minutes of airtime on the tens and twos each and every day, as is outlined in my contract. I'm fairly confident you've never read your contract. That's what I have lawyers to do for me, Graham. They provide a necessary service, and so do I. Oh, now I know you haven't read your contract. Which is why I'm here providing the essential service of movie reviewing. For whomst? For the cinema-loving cognoscenti of our fine city. Richter, we already have an arts reporter, and she will hurt you if you muscle in on her gig. Yeah, Richter, if you come at the Queen, you best not miss. Ah, well, that's good, because I had to change my rating system from the conventional means because of my Kevlar-like moral fiber. I would have had to rate each movie two thumbs up as my hands rest responsibly but firmly on the co-opter's control yoke. That means that I am limiting myself to A, public domain films, and B, rating them on my own personal scale, the Richter scale, which of course is logarithmic. Rector, I've just realized that by arguing this point further, I would be allowing you to dictate the narrative, so let me reframe my question. How's the traffic? Somewhat 
beer inducing, Graham. In the 1895 classic Train Pulling Into a Station, one could best describe it as being the best value for money. If you're looking for a thriller with a surprise twist, why not go with the film that caused the biggest splash and literally invented the thriller genre? And if you're a cinematography buff like myself, you'll find their use of force perspective sublime. I give this film four stars on the Richter scale. Despite what I just said, I do have to ask, what is the surprise twist in Train Pulling Into Station? You're still alive by the end of it! And how does the work of the Lumiere brothers translate to current goings-on in Innsberg traffic? It's a short film, Graham, so once it's over, people are going to be piling out of the theater and onto the roads, which could cause quite a delay. 357, 358, 359. Goodbye, Richter. We go now to summer intern Derek to interview Aldersman-elect Alex, I think. Hello, Derek. Graham, can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah, you're coming through loud and clear, Derek. Okay, good. Um, I don't know how long the generator's going to hold out for. Hi, listeners at home. It's summer intern Derek, here to interview our aldersman-elect, Alex, whom I've had to chase back onto his barge in the middle of Lake Inesh. Uh, but fortunately, I have subdued him with a piece of deer fence that I have found on his barge. How are you, Alex? Oh, great. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. I feel like uh, an endangered turtle that got trapped in a six-pack ring. I didn't realize you could swim so fast. I was having trouble keeping up with you. Hate is a powerful motivator, Derek. Do you also do a triathlon around Innsberg every weekend? Every weekend? My dad told me that if I didn't get out of the house every Saturday, he'd throw out my Super Nintendo. Derek, I will buy you a Dreamcast with VMUs if you let me out of here. Huh. Sega has what Nintendo don't. But I have to hold steadfast to my journalistic integrity. Also, I haven't finished Final Fantasy VI yet. Yeah, it is one of the better ones. It's uh, really meant to be savored. Hey, can we... Is this the interview, Derek? Well, I mean, I'm asking him questions. He's giving me answers. Uh, carry on. All right, Alex, here's the first of my hard-hitting questions. You're the first re-elected aldersman in Thurston County history. Why are you so popular? I don't know, Derek. I think somebody downstairs hates me. Giuseppe the janitor? Are you accusing him of rigging the election? Derek, that's where the storage room is. You know Giuseppe doesn't live at the station, right? Michael lives at the station. I'm the exception that proves the rule, Derek. That's not what that means, Michael. Proves in this instance means to test the rule. Okay, is this the interview? Don't worry, Graham, it still is. I have lots of hard-hitting questions. Give me strength. Which one of your revolutionary policies do you feel helped bring you back to the office? Was it introducing a second Lake Inesh? Sir, what do you mean, two? There's only one Lake Inesh, and it's here. I live in it. Wait, Alex, didn't anyone tell you? We all got together and renamed Lake Indianame Lake Inesh 2, in honor of your tireless efforts to rename the Culvert Drainage Lagoon Lake Inesh. I guess you must have missed it because you were busy becoming a bog person. I'm getting a scintillating scotoma. That means the migraine's in the mail. Wow, you got a mailbox out here already? You are dug in, like a tick or a bog person. Or someone stuck in their own deer fence. Okay, third hard-hitting question, Alex. Rumors have it that you're going to turn Lake Inesh into your new executive residence. How much can we expect the budget overrun to be for redecorating? What rumors? Derek, what are your sources? I was up late trying to beat Kafka and I could hear my dad sleep muttering on the couch. Derek, I will do literally anything to get out of this interview. Oh, how about your job? You sneaky bugger. Oh god, get it off me! Uh, I was starting to miss the Alders' manorial scones. They're two for one down at the Yeasty Priest. I thought those were just for me. Well, since you haven't been around eating them, they've had to sell them to somebody. All right, Derek, load all my flotsam into the van. We're going to go back and reclaim my scones. That's the spirit, Alex. Just think of Innsberg as the place you left to come home to. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Aldersman Alex returns to work after months of stewing in a lake of everyone's juices. That's not a freshwater outflow! Thank you, Derek. And Alex, can't wait to have you back in the studio after a bath. Uh, oh, wait, hey, who won the pool? <coughs> really, Gus? You had him for this week? Oh, it's all coming up Gus today. Well, that takes us to the break. When we come back, the Innsberg Speed Dating Club and the Innsberg Community College Computer Science Department will be holding an SSH key party. That's right, kids. Keep things safe, sane, and hexadecimal. And an update on Mayor Steno Paperclips. His worship is being moved into solitary at Heathston Ultramin as too many inmates were using him to break out of their cells. More Quirpline after this. 
You're listening to Quirpline here on QWRPFM. Thanks again to our sponsor, the incessant pleasant pheasant. This bird spouts aphorisms filled with constant teeth grinding optimism, and it has no shutoff switch. The incessant pleasant pheasant, its happiness is omnipresent.